Hey humans, welcome back to Otro Videito Mas. Today, as requested by Valentin, I'm going to show you what it's like to use Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad mini 6. Yeah, let's get to it. First up, let's talk about Lightroom, which I think it's the most widely used between the two. Now, Lightroom is an amazing tool for editing your photos, and with the iPad Mini 6, you can make quick and precise adjustments using just your fingers and the sliders. You can adjust exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and a ton more just by swiping your finger back and forth. Obviously you need to know what you're doing, but it's, it's very simple. And if you happen to own presets, like the ones from Frono's Photo, then your editing journey is gonna be a lot simpler. In Lightroom, you can also create mask for more in-depth editing, which opens up a whole nother creativity pathway to make your photos stand out from the rest. And because the iPad mini six is so portable, you can literally edit your photos anywhere, whether you're on vacation, at a fancy hotel, or at an Airbnb, at a photo shoot, just sitting at home, at a coffee shop, on the plane, on the bus, on the toilet, you name it, anywhere, you can edit anywhere because it's so light and tiny and portable. Yeah, it's the size. Let's go back to, you know, those reasons why you should get one of the size. It's powerful and it's tiny, but a bit bigger than your iPhone. Definitely the best in between device between the iPhone and the MacBook Pro. Now let's jump into Lightroom to show you what it looks like and some of the powerful features that it has. Hi guys, let's talk Lightroom on the iPad. I chose this photo because it is the most complex when it comes to the leash. Lightroom definitely does help make your photos look a lot better. So let's go here. We do all the adjustments. So the first thing you'll probably see is the auto when it comes to edit. If you hit auto, it doesn't really do much for the edit. It still looks on the warmer side, not bright enough, definitely needs work. So let's back off from that and let's look at the profiles. So Lightroom has all these profiles already in there. That you can use you get all these different black and whites which is pretty awesome and so when i first started what i did was get presets since i was starting i figured this would be the best way and then these preset packs basically give you a vibe that you're trying to achieve now let's cancel this out no presets now in here in lightroom you can obviously adjust for exposure contrast highlights shadows whites and blacks so we go back here to the colors i can increase the vibrance and the saturation there's effects that you can use like texture it makes it very soft clarity makes it like hazy feel like a pro mist filter you can dehaze which i don't really use very often you can vignette now we can go in here zoom in and sharpen you can you can see that it's not the best sharpening tool but it does sharpen the image So there's a lot of things, especially here in noise reduction, when it comes to nighttime photography and all that low light stuff, it really does help. We go here, you can crop your images, center, rule thirds, you can actually flip the image upside down, <laughs> pretty much anything, rotate it, anything. And if we go here to healing, we got remove, heal, and clone. Now, before we get into that, let's go into masking. So I can mask a subject, select the subject and I can raise his exposure and bring it down and I can you know adjust all but if you really want to make drastic change just click on the mask click duplicate and invert mask one and now you'll have the background you have full control of the background which let's just say let's blow it up a little bit you see you can definitely definitely have at it so now let's go back to the healing and let's go to remove here's when Photoshop comes in handy look I'm gonna try to take this away right And you see the E is all messed up. It just, you can clearly see it's been cut off in there. And now if we try even harder to get this out. They, they kind of work pretty decently. 
nothing crazy but i definitely don't like that e like if we try to fix it here it won't do anything now i can use the clone tool and put this right here basically take a sample which is not very accurate to say the least <laughs> so i i could take that that just looks terrible let's see if we were to go back and heal it a little bit i mean i could be a little more precise with it but it still looks bad this, this section right here just bad to imagine having even more complex things to remove imagine how difficult it would be here in lightroom actually let's just cancel all these changes now we got the leash back i'm going to switch this around so you can see this is what it looks like when you're on vertical mode so i'm not a huge fan of it you can the pictures are so small definitely not a fan of it so always landscape all right let's open lightroom here on the iphone as you can see you basically have all the adjustable settings down at the bottom let's open here this is auto let's undo that we can open light which you can adjust exposure shadows everything you can adjust colors add the effects the texture the clarity you can also use the healing brushes this one is remove you can do heal and clone as well you can also do masking. In this case, we masked the dog, but you have all the masks that you could possibly need. Now let's turn this landscape and this is much better, a lot more user friendly, but it's still a little bit cumbersome having to open the columns just to see, but all in all, not too bad. Next up is Photoshop. Photoshop is an incredibly, incredibly powerful editing tool. That's perfect for taking your photos to literally the next, next level. Like Lightroom is like one level. And when you reach Photoshop, it's like the next, 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 next level. I mean, you can literally create anything if you know how to use it. Now with the iPad mini six, you can use the Apple pencil second gen to make very precise edits on your photos while creating mask or removing blemishes. You can also change your background and even add text to your photos. Plus having that A15 bionic chip, you get lightning fast processing speeds, which are so, so useful for running complex editing on multiple layers. Cause when you're stacking them up, depending how complicated or how much work you have to do to that particular photo, the layers do become quite jarring to devices that can't handle it. Let's jump into Photoshop and yeah, I'll show you one thing that I use quite a bit since I do shoot a lot of doggy portraits. The leash gets in the way almost every time unless they're very well trained and so removing leashes is a big part of what I do and in Lightroom you can try to do it and it kind of works very time consuming but in Photoshop it takes maybe two minutes tops one minute if you're really good at it. It's pretty simple, straightforward, and it's just clean. It's just a clean image afterwards. Unless you're pixel peeping, you ain't gonna find that leash. So let's get to it. That way, you know what I know. Let's go. All right, so now that we have the photo here in Photoshop, all right, Apple Pencil is connected. Now let's see. So you have all the different selection tools, all the different brushes. So you have you have things you can use. But for this, I am just going to select the lasso and then let's try to trace this out. The Apple Pencil should be a lot easier. All right, so let's start by selecting this section here. So you have it, the E still looks really good. There's no issues there. Now it's gone, the leash all around the neck is gone. The leash going through the frame is also gone. I would say this is a pretty decent success for on the go stuff. Obviously, if you're trying to go crazy with Photoshop, then I would suggest using your computer. But for on the go performance, this is pretty sweet. Now with Photoshop, it's also the same thing. If I turn this 
landscape you see how it's just there's almost no room at all i can turn the picture around like this but there's literally almost no room whatsoever to do anything definitely landscape is the way to go a lot more detail a lot more space to check out everything now one of the best things about using lightroom and photoshop on the ipad mini is that you get to use the best of both worlds in a very portable device so if you know lightroom please give photoshop a chance i know it can be a little bit intimidating at first and overwhelming try using both of them in tandem and you'll be able to create an unimaginable image that only you can imagine <laughs> no but seriously these two together is it's a lot of power i know ai is a thing now you know and you can hack at it but if you want to create your own stuff without the help of ai or you know you just want to play around then use these together to make a very powerful photo editing tool plus with the ipad mini's 8.3 inch screen you get a high resolution display that's perfect for seeing literally every single detail in your photos you'll be able to see it all and fix it all. In conclusion, if you're a photographer or somebody who loves editing photos, the iPad mini 6 is an amazing device that's perfect, perfect for you. With Lightroom and Photoshop, you can take your editing game to the next, 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 next level and create just literally amazing photos that will leave long lasting impressions on all of your clients or your family members or yourself. Now, don't forget to subscribe for a chance to win a camera cage kit of your choosing. Make sure you like and comment. Let me know your thoughts. But yeah, thanks for watching and that books you Oh yeah, that sounds good. <laughs>